Hey, hey, and welcome to Strap a Watch. I'm Michael Knapp, Michael Knapp Leather. On today's episode, what we're going to do is take a little history lesson into the Rolex date just. After last week's episode, I'll leave a link here for you guys to be able to view that episode if you haven't seen it yet. Is we met with Mr. Doug Logan, a subscriber who had asked me to make him a couple of alligator straps. So last week we made the black alligator strap for his day just. This week I made a tan alligator strap. So you're gonna be seeing me this week on this episode, hand make that tan alligator strap, go into the history of the day just. We're gonna talk with Doug here briefly. He'll be here in just a moment. Uh, he picked up his tan alligator strap this morning, so pretty cool. Also, I wanted to let you guys know, my wife told me this past week, my year-end goal is to reach 10,000 subscribers. And she said, you reach 10,000 subscribers, you can buy another Rolex. <laughs> so if you haven't yet subscribed, please, please subscribe. The sooner we can get to 10,000, the sooner I can buy myself another Rolex. Okay, we're going to get right into it. After the intro, stick around. Well, he's back, Mr. Doug Logan. How you doing, man? Good, great. Yeah. So you've had your watch for a whole week. Love it. Yeah. Tell us about the, your experience with it. Um, uh, well, people don't have the opportunity to see it because I throw it in their face. <laughs> but I love it. I, I, I take it to sales meetings, take it to business meetings, and to church. Yeah, and right. And works very, very well. Love the... You got a dinner party tonight? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Bunch of doctors, you were telling me. Yes, yes, and... So, yeah, you're going to be uh, fitting right in with those doctors. This is so, so easy to work. <laughs> it's much better than this, the, the strap. Yeah, we just went through the quick release uh, lug pins, so I taught them how, and it's just boom, boom. This is the brand new one. I just got done making for them. You'll be seeing me hand make this on today's episode. A tan alligator skin, leather hide, turned out gorgeous. He wanted black stitching to match the black dial. And the gold, we, we, we put it on earlier, yeah. all right? But boy, does the tan alligator make the gold pop. It makes it pop so much. Yeah. And I was hoping for that. That's, so now you got two straps. And I always say, you know, with uh, these quick release lug pins, it's like having one watch become multiple watches. Right, right. So, and then he also asked me to make him one of my five pocket minimalist wallets. I didn't showcase making this. Uh, we had a little health issue. My wife was rushed to the hospital the other night. She's okay. Um, so kidney stone, kidney stone. We were like, once we found out it was a kidney stone, we we're like, yeah, you know, cause at first I thought her appendix burst. So I didn't have, the ability this week to film this, but this is also for you. And I hope you enjoy everything. I do owe you a keeper on the uh, the tan alligator. I'll get that made for you here That's real wonderful. soon. Yep. Thanks again, Doug. Thank you very much. You're wonderful. Yeah, I appreciate what a everything. Pro. You're a pro. Thank thanks. you. Well, what a great guy Doug is. And thanks again, Doug, for the orders and letting me have your watch. Obviously, I have completely fell in love with the Rolex Datejust. So I've done all this research this week and I've got so much info to get in such a little bit of time. It's gonna be kind of a brief history in time here. So here's a picture of the first example from 1945, reference number 4467. And notice there's no word Datejust on the dial. And it was a bubble back, it had um, the first, very first date complication. And here is an example on Chrono 24. So just to show you pricing and what these vintage Rolexes and the pricing of these, here's one, 1945 black dial. So also, it's also with condition and all of that. And then, you know, in 1953, the Turnograph came out, which looks a lot like a Submariner in a sense and it became known as the Thunderbird. 
So this is an example right here, 1953. You can see it looks like a sub. And uh, it, what happened, it became known as the Thunderbird because one of the pilots of the Thunderbirds uh, was sporting the watch that Rolex found out. So, of course, marketing, what they did was they gifted it. And here's an example on Chrono 24. So look at that price. They gifted it to all of the Thunderbird pilots and the name stuck. And so for marketing purposes, that's what they ended up doing was uh, really promoting it as the Thunderbird. And that watch wasn't discontinued until 2011. So, you know, you never know. It'll probably be back one of these years. And here is Doug's watch. Um, so this is when he dropped it off really now a couple weeks ago. And... And it was all beat up. You know, I shared. you got to watch that episode if you haven't. And it, it, you can kind of see right here. The lighting isn't the greatest. I didn't really get it under too bright a light. But it was really beat up. He was wearing it to work. He owns a termite and pest control uh, company. And he's crawling underneath, you know, houses. And he was underneath our deck when I saw him do it one time. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, I would never crawl under there. You know, you know, you don't know what's living under there. So, but that's what he would do, man. And he was wearing the watch. It was his father's watch. And after his father passed away, he's the oldest of four. The mother gifted the watch to him. And because of the connection, the watch for him with his father, he started wearing it all the time. And he was wearing it to work. And until he noticed, man, he was really thrashing it and didn't realize the value. So that's, you know, and that's on last week's episode. But I was able to, myself, with some just everyday flitz polish, was able to polish out a lot of the, the scratches. He was, he was in, amazed. He really was. And, and that's the thing, you know, with, uh, with older vintage watches, do you get them serviced or not? It's, it's personal personal preference. I'm not going to tell you yes or no. Uh, the thing is, it can really affect value if you do. And But if it's not working, you know, well, then what are you going to do? So you want to watch, if you're, you're getting a watch, you want to be able to wear a watch, you know, and then there's some watches that, you know, you got a Paul Newman, you can't even wear them out anymore. There's They're a couple hundred, few hundred thousand dollars just to start for, you know, a 1960s Rolex uh, Daytona Paul Newman, you know, I mean, and it, for anybody that doesn't know this, the, <laughs> Paul Newman's actual watch just a few years ago sold at auction after all the royalties and everything was done and the commission fees for $17.5 million. If you see the auction, it says $15.5 million, but they have to also then pay all the commission fees and, and everything so 17 and a half million dollars for paul newman's actual rolex daytona so you know this watch the date just i gotta get back to the history here because i don't have much time it's just a phenomenal watch it's gone through so many variations so many dials of course then during the big watch craze that you know wasn't all that long ago Rolex kept up, and they made some bigger modern date chests. And so here are the specs of a 41 millimeter. You can go back and always stop and rewind and check out the uh, specs. And then what I did was just also checking out current pricing of today on a date just 41. And you can see the difference. Like here's one that had white gold on it, so precious metal versus steel. So the bezel here is 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 a plain bezel polished bezel and then this is a fluted bezel and that's how you can tell whether one has you know just stainless or if it also includes a precious metal so you can see all the ones with precious metal have a fluted bezel as opposed to just a, a standard plain polished bezel like this one right here so and you know it's all about affordability so you can see the pricing as well you know and yeah, it, yeah, you know, a few thousand dollars more, you're getting a precious metal. And you saw the two-tone one. That would be kind of comparable to, like, Doug's watch today of the modern era. If I were to get one myself, I would get a 41 millimeter date just today. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't 
be looking at 36 millimeter date justs uh, from the past because I'll tell you what, after having Doug's watch for a week, um, and I, I put it on a few different times just to you know check the strap, and right when I got it, I'd put it on to see what it looked like on my wrist, and it wears very well on my really seven inch wrist. Okay, I mean it really does. So there's a ton of them out there. And, you know, in all of the research I've done as well with uh, the Datejust from, you know, even 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, you can find them between even $3,000 to $5,000 range. And there's a lot of them out there. So I think that, for me, is a good value as far as even, you know, perhaps an investment type of a watch because, you know, here we are, 2020. You're getting a watch from 1980, and, you know, the time just is going to keep marching on. And that watch will probably keep going up in value. You know, I would almost guarantee it, because they'll end up getting bought up as well. You know, is the bubble ever going to burst? Yeah, probably, but when, you know? And so here's the final product of Doug's watch with the tan alligator strap that I made. And this is last week's black alligator. Uh, we have the quick release lug pin system, so he's going to be able to interchange these out literally in seconds and switch them out for different occasions and different wardrobe and what have you. So listen, I know it was a lot to cover in just a little bit of time. I really thank you guys for joining me. Please subscribe if you haven't. God bless you all, and until next time, keep on ticking.